join me quickly as we read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. And we read Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31. And the Lord answered me and said, Write what? Make it plain upon what? The tables, that he may run that readeth it. Readeth is Old English. It means reads, present continuous tense. That he may run that reads it. So don't let uh, the death, uh, the read it. It can be confusing at times. Hallelujah. Now verse 3. For the vision is yet for what? When is the vision meant for? The vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the hand it shall what? Every vision has its appointed time. Every plan of God for your life, every program of God for your life has its appointed time. There is no vision God has given you, no dream he has given you that does not have his own time. God puts deadline, puts dates on everything that he wants to do in your life. He said the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it will what? And not what? And not lie. Though it what? Though it takes longer. Though it's, it, it, it seems slow. Though it tarry. What do you do? When it seems like it's not coming to pass, abandon it, run away from it, give up on it. What is the instruction? Wait for it. Because it will what? Surely come, it will not tarry. It may seem slow. He said, wait for it. How about say, I'll wait for it. Isaiah 40. Verse 29 to 31. Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31. The book of Isaiah. Thank God I have my Bible here. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 29 to 31. He gives power to who? Do you have your Bible with you? He gives power to who? To the weak. And to those who have no, no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall what? Utterly fall. He said it's possible for young people to run out of strength. But... But those who wait, you see the word wait there again. He said, though your vision may tarry, what do you do? Wait. Now he now said, those who wait. But this time he extended it, who wait on the Lord. You are not just waiting, you are waiting on God. That word wait there looks like waiter. You know waiters in the five-star hotel? You know waiters in five-star restaurant? Huh? Whether you need them or you don't need them, they just wait on you. They just stand where you can see them, there's a professional way they stand and they just wait on you. Ordinary this like this, they are there because they are waiting on you. Huh? So he said, those who wait on the on their uncle, those who wait on their friends, those who wait on the government, those who wait on this new administration, because this, your candidate won, your, this is my, ah, there's nothing wrong in expecting from the administration, but he said those who wait on the Lord shall renew their what? They shall mount up with what? Wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. That will be your testimony. Amen. You will run, you will not be weary. Amen. You mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. Your email is not loud at all. Amen. I told us in the second service, God wants every of his child to have a vision. God doesn't want you to live your life without vision, no direction. God wants you to have, what's a vision? The picture of your future, the picture of your destination, where you are going. It has to be clear. Because if you don't know where you are going, you'll be following everybody to where they are going. You have to know where you are going. You have to know what you want. It has to be clear. Hallelujah. Don't just have children. 
have plan. We're having two children. Abby? Don't say it's a biological accident. Hallelujah. Don't say what? It's not a biological accident. Have a plan. Have a focus. Have where you are going. Be definite. Stop living your life by try and error. What can we do in this year of 2023? What do we do? Okay, we, there are four things here. Okay, let's try with which one. Tokini, Tokini, This is what we are doing this year. If you live your life that way, you can't go too far. You have to have a definite vision for your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Then we say you have to be focused on it. Don't let anybody distract you. Don't even let the fact that you are waiting distract you. Don't even let the fact that you are is being delayed, is being slowed down, distract you. It may tarry. He didn't say, change it. He said, do what? Wait for it. This is very important. Wait for it. Because it will surely what? Because it has a point, it will surely come to pass. I'll wait for it. Every visionary needs to know how to wait on the Lord. Just like a waiter waits on the guest. And his attention is on that guest. If you're a waiter and you're waiting on, on our table, and we have five guests on that table, all your attention is on that table. Am I correct? So when you talk about waiting on the Lord, that means your eyes is on God. Many people think waiting on God is fasting and prayer. Say, I'm waiting on God. There are many people fasting, but they are not waiting on God. Why? They are not even, it's not even about God. When you are waiting on God, your eyes is where? It's on God. Your expectation is on God. You're not distracted by what the enemy is trying to do in your life. Because the devil will do everything to distract you. You will pray and set target. You will not meet the target at the time you set the target. It is part of the devil's strategy. So that you can say, well, you can, so that you can give up. He said every vision has appointed time. And God makes all things beautiful in his. Look, I have so many things I want in my life. I set target. But when they don't come at the time I set, I still don't give up. I wait on God. And wait on it. And wait for it. It might be delayed. It cannot be denied. Because God cannot lie. Are you following me? The date may change. The date I said may be different from the date God has said. But the reality is that it will come to a pass. One day you will carry the baby. It may not be at 26 that you want to carry. It may be at 36. But you still carry the baby. In God's time. Many of us don't believe in God's time. There are many things I wanted, I will set this, I will set target, I will pray, I will give, I will sow seed, I will do everything. It's not every of my prayer that comes at the time I wanted them. Honestly, I have to be honest with you. But when they don't come at that time, I don't give up. It will come to pass, that's what the Bible says. You know, one of our, one of our leaders here, you know, the daughter, they were trying to make some arrangement for her to relocate. They made the first arrangement to a particular country, it didn't work. It didn't work. It was a lot of struggle. They changed the country. They tried, they tried this country again. This time, somebody ran away with their money. So we're talking. I said, I said, man, I said, don't worry. I said, it will come to pass at a time when it will not come with any stress. The blessing of God is without sorrow, no stress. You know what happened? <laughs> this God, not strange God, though. God is real, though. The same country they carry their money away, a classmate that they've been children together now saw an opportunity that lives in that country and insisted that it is my friend that will come and do this one. 
The family said, no, 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 no. We still have somebody in Nigeria we need to bring. She, the person said, no, 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 no. It's my friend that will come. That one will come later. There was argument, but eventually they kept it for her. She did not spend one naira of her own. Everything was paid for. A good training was done online for her. A good job with an apartment waiting for her, with an official car. <laughs> United Kingdom. Do you know how many people have been in United Kingdom for 15 years that are not roaming around like wanderer? Like refugee? Sleeping in train station? Or Monili Olono? A landlord in Nigeria? Sleeping in library? They are telling him we want to close library. <laughs> Going for welfare package. When God, when, when, when God says something, it has appointed time. I'm serious. I wanted to have my first child. I got married very early. I wanted to, I wanted by 40, I'm done. But God said, no, that's not my plan. I want you to focus on the assignment I gave you first. So I was busy with the assignment, and the assignment became my first son. I married this job and got attached completely. Because that time I'm waiting is for something. So I invested that time on that, what it is. Are you following me? Then when the appointed time came, this pregnancy, no headache, nothing. The other ones that we were losing, there will be a day that be, this one, no stress. We were almost asking that. I, 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 are you following what I'm saying? I prophesied to somebody here, especially those who are waiting. I don't know the area you are waiting. I prophesy, you won't wait in vain. Amen. You did not say amen properly. Amen. You will say at the end of the day, it is worth the wait. You will not, you will not, I said, you say it's worth the wait. Amen. When that time came, God made the provision for us to have the child where we wanted to have the child. How we paid the bills, I cannot explain fully. And I took my family, uh, my family were in Connecticut for five weeks. My in laws said, No, come and stay here. This is where people who have come into children. I said, No. I, I took a whole duplex and paid for it. They were wondering, where is he getting the money? I must eat Nigerian food once a day. I was eating Nigerian food. Look, the way it will happen, you will not even be able to explain. It will be supernatural. That house, you carry the picture up and down. You, you will build it without stress. You will finish the house. You'll be asking yourself, is Amir the one that built this house? You'll be asking yourself, am I the one who built this house? One of my uh, senior friend pastors shared it with me. I was in his house some weeks ago. I saw the beautiful house. So we're talking a few days ago. He was telling me how he built the house. He said, Pastor, people thought I was rich. I didn't have money before. He said, I back into the house about two or three years ago. He said, one guy that is a member of our church that I've always known, he has always given to church projects, he has never given me money personally, and I've never been angry that he didn't give me because he was supporting the work of God. He just called me in the morning. He said, I can't sleep overnight. After he had relocated, though, not even when he was in Nigeria. After he had relocated, he said, he called me. He said, I, didn't, I couldn't sleep. God told me that I didn't take care of you. And I've called my friend, and two of us are building you a house. Where do you want it? He said, I already have a place. He said, before the end of that day, he sent 60 million naira. And just to start, when it is God funding it, when it is his will, it's his bill. Yes. When it's your will, it's your bill. Yes. When it is his will, it's his bill. When it is your will, it's your bill. Yes. He said, before we finish 60 million, he said 30 million. He said, before we finish 30 million, he said 35 million. <laughs> he said, I didn't know I can build a house like that. 
Look, you will point to that blessing and say, this cannot be me, this cannot be man, this is God. Because they, can't, they won't be able to trace it to your efforts. You are not saying amen, you don't know what I'm talking about. Can you trace the job this lady is doing in you? Can you trace it? No, it can, it's not your qualification. It is favor, it is grace, it is God at work in your life. It will be without struggle and sweat. You are not saying amen. amen. You will conceive, you know you have conceived. Amen. It is you that will be telling you that go and do checkup. We are David. I told my wife, if it is only, this, it's enough. When I saw the trouble women go through, I said, this one, it's not bad. I said, look, I can't stand this kind of thing again the second time. Talking about my wife, no. You know, because I, I was there when my wife delivered David. They said, I should sit there. I said, I'm not sitting down. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know something can happen that would make me, I stood up praying. They said, ah, Pastor, they, they, say I should, they say I should order food. I said, which food? <laughs> Where will I put the food? When I, me and somebody put, we put, a, we put a, I will not be eating. So I told my wife, I said, please. Dicky called me, he said, ah, Pastor, please, oh, now that God has made the way, let's do another one fast. Oh. I said, ah, in my mind, I was thinking about, if you know how much this cost me, you know that I should rest. <laughs> hey. 22 months later. No, 22 months. No, sorry. Uh, remove 22 from 9. 9 from 22. How much do you have there? Huh? 13. Huh? 13 months later. Huh? I say I'm feeling somehow. Ah, I say how you feel it? Eh, my taste, my taste. But I say, you better go and do pregnancy test. <laughs> I mean, even me that said it, I did not even... Another one has happened again. So when it's time to have the second one, I followed her to the hospital when we're closed. I said, sir, our doctor is a pastor too. I said, please, after this one, we don't want another one again. What can we do? I said, because the way this one happened, if another one should happen again, I will go bankrupt. <laughs> I know my size. I know my size. I said, the way this thing is happening, if another one should happen again, I will run away. Uh -huh. Sir, what do we do immediately after so that we don't uh, have another baby? You know what the doctor said? The man just laughed. He said, Pastor, I deal with you. Hmm, let's thank God. You are now the one saying you don't want a game. The money you have been running after, running after, running after, running after. The money is coming in a rush. You say, oh God, can they take it easy with me? <laughs> the house you are saying, hey, I'm living in that land. I need to have my own and my own house. They will be giving you houses, you will know the address. Amen. They will dash your house. You also come and see it and know that this is my house. You won't have time to go and see it. You just say, put the document in that file. I have no husband, nobody is toasting me. Correct human being, Mary, four, will be waiting on you at the same time. You'll be running there. You say, What's your place? I'm just confused. They say, What happened? They say, oh, The four are good men, nice, God fearing. I don't even know where, I, and they are all on my neck. <laughs> the same you. Because when the time of a thing comes, he said, The hasting is, he hasting what? He hasting his word. Huh? To perform it when the time comes. When the time of a prophecy comes in your life, God is in a hurry. I'm serious. God is in a hurry. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, it came as a rush, like a mighty rush. It was in a hurry. Every time the time of a thing comes in your life, God is in a hurry. The same God that you have been waiting on, we just come, pow! Before you recover, another one, pow! You are at the point you say, ah, it's any, what is the problem? They'll be calling you in Germany, calling you in America, calling you in Europe. One woman, one mother in this church waited for six years. 
her mom said she, her, her mother-in-law said she can never have a child for his son, for her son. But eventually, a month or two after she conceived. The first one, one. The second one, twins. She said one day, the three of them were crying at the same time, and she was the only one in the house. She said she threw them in the bed and said, hey, look me, you cannot kill me. Then I reminded her, I said, you? Now you are the one talking like this? You that many years ago, you were saying, God, even if it is just one. I pray for someone here. Every vision that has come to their time will begin to be fulfilled in a rush in your life. Every dream and prophecy that has come to their, the fullness of their time, they will begin to happen in a rush. It will be suddenly. Amen. Say suddenly. suddenly. Please take your seat briefly. So every visionary needs to learn how to wait on the Lord from time to time. What, do we, what does it mean again to wait on the Lord? Waiting time is recharging time. You must have period in your life that you pause and let God refill you with another energy. Because sometimes the fulfillment of dream, it can take sometimes a long distance. You want God to do that thing in your life, sometimes it can take a long journey, it can take a long process. So in that long journey, you need to be recharged, to be refilled, to be refreshed. To be you need your strength to be renewed from time to time. When you are traveling on a long journey on the road, what do you do from time to time? From time to time, you park in a filling station and do what? And refill your tank. Abi? If it's a long journey, there are prophecies in your life that won't take one day to happen. There are promises over your life that won't take two days to happen. Some is going to be a journey. And he said, but pastor, my friends, he just got married now and he did nine months. That is your friend. God's plan for everybody is not the same. Are you following what I'm saying? It is like somebody who planted a corn and somebody who planted a cocoa. They both planted something, but they are not going to have harvest at the same time. The corn man will harvest out when? Three months. Cocoa man may take three years. And when they get to market, they are not sold the same price. The person building a bungalow may not dig more than, more than this, my leg side, new side, because it's bungalow. Somebody building 16-story 16 uh, 16 uh, uh, building, he may need to dig and dig and dig. While others have finished their building, he may still be digging. But they are not the same. Are you following what I'm saying? Wait, learn how to wait on God to renew your strength. Because, you see, naturally you can give up. Naturally you can get tired. But when you know how to wait on God to renew your strength, you will not be tired. I would say I will not be tired. Yes. 